Halo Infinite Flight 2 has come and gone, and what is 343 planning to do with the information from that flight? Halo 3 turns 14 years old, the greatest Halo player ever to live has been revealed, and mod support coming to the MCC, as well as the best clips from the flight weekend. But that's not everything. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So a lot happened this past week in Halo guys, so this is the series where I like to go back and kind of recap everything that happened in the previous week in case you missed anything because there was a lot of really interesting details that happened throughout the flight week and also throughout the entirety of the week. And I know not everyone can catch every bit of news that happens throughout the week and so every Monday morning I like to put together this compilation of everything that happened in the last week of Halo so everyone can stay caught up to date. If you like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. It really lets me know you want to see some more content like this, and it really does help out the video and channel, get a better place within the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So with a surprise Monday move, guys, we had an Inside Infinite update drop. Usually these drop on the last Thursday of the month, but obviously with the flight coming right around the corner. They wanted to give people enough time to go through this and read. So on Monday, they dropped in a whole bunch of information about Halo Infinite's flighting process that's coming up for this weekend. The design philosophy versus the various things a part of the flight as well. Even some great details, guys. This is probably one of the most content rich updates we've ever had about Halo Infinite in an Inside Infinite update. I do have a full video going into that as well. If you guys want to check out that video to get even more details on this one, but some really interesting things especially talking about the uh, progression and challenge system and things like that. Revealing that Season 1 will have a 100 tier battle pass. Going into further explanation of the challenge system since the challenge system is the only way to earn XP within Halo Infinite and hence progression on the battle pass. They also did mention that the battle pass is the only form of progression within this game so it does sound like there will be no XP ranking system with Halo Infinite at launch at least. They go into a lot of information about big team battle as it was showcased within the live stream which we're going to talk about here in a minute here guys but yeah like big team battle got a big showcase of how the mode's designed how it's going to play out and one thing i want to point out just a little tinfoil hat theory on this one guys is that they mentioned specific btb maps as previous big team battle experiences and they mentioned coagulation three times within this blog update. And the only other big team battle map that is mentioned is Ragnarok, which is a remake of Valhalla in Halo 4, which is a, is really like a spiritual successor, which Bungie at least said, with the creation of Valhalla of Blood Gulch, which is one of the most ultimate, like all time greatest maps all time in Halo. So I'm just saying within this blog update, they mentioned these maps in particular, it just makes me feel that like, there's gonna be some way that big team battle is gonna have coagulation or, or Blood Gulch come back in the game. Again, that's my tinfoil hat theory in between this one but uh well, we'll see i do have a video on my channel which goes into full details of this blog update guys so i definitely suggest you go check out that video on the channel if you want to know more about this or you can just read it for yourself in the description down below then on the 22nd we actually had a live stream detailing things that are going to be in the upcoming flight and it showcased some really great things about halo infinite but one thing that i think a lot of people got from this live stream is the gameplay of big team battle in halo infinite and guys big team battle looks absolutely amazing in this game i cannot wait to get a chance to play this next weekend guys now the developers did kind of have a like commentary go along with this kind of discussing their design philosophies within big team battle and just unique things about it or just you know talking about how great it is really but i actually made a video of myself talking about 13 things about this one game that people really seem to miss out on like how the flag positions actually change throughout the match as well i have that video on my channel if you guys want to check that out trust me it's actually a pretty interesting watch because there's just so many little intricate little things that have actually fundamentally changed within big team battle for halo infinite and i really want you guys to keep in the know of all that great stuff which one of the things from the btb live stream was the loot caves here that they mentioned about in the gameplay and the community lost their collective minds over the door to the loot cave why is that because this door is almost an exact copy replica of the classic Forerunner doors that we've had within Halo previously. Arispus brings this up on Twitter and people just lost their collective mind. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool that it like, brings back like the classic design that we've had throughout all the different kind of doors. But uh, 
I guess people really like their doors now for Halo Infinite, which, hey, you know what? If people find good things about Halo, I can't complain. Now, just before the flight went live, a really interesting thing was posted up on Halo Waypoint, and that is the art of Halo Infinite, because you guys know that we mentioned in a previous Last Week in Halo video that it looks like the art of Halo Infinite art book is now available for pre-order on Amazon, and some previews were actually shown of some of the art guys and got it looks absolutely incredible but there's one bit of art in particular i really want to point out to you guys it's this bit of concept art that shows Master Chief fighting Aatrox, and this is Aatrox in Halo Infinite concept art. Now, they did state within this blog update that went along with this, saying that there are no spoilers along with Halo Infinite's story with these images that are being released right now, but I just find it very interesting that they have concepts of Aatrox involving Halo Infinite. Now, you can see that this has Master Chief with kind of like a more Halo 5-like armor set, so this must have been really early in development when it comes to the story of Halo Infinite. So the fact that this is not a spoiler makes me think that Aatrox might not be in the launch version of the story for Halo Infinite, but I have a feeling sometime down the line, Aatrox will be involved with Halo Infinite in some capacity. And of course, the big thing that happened this week, guys, the Halo Infinite Flight 2 took place, guys, and we had a chance to play PvP multiplayer along with weapon drills and the new mode of training mode coming in as well with this flight. And guys, I sunk in a ton of hours in this week. I played so much Halo Infinite. This game just seems to be just so great. It's been actually very well received throughout the community as well. Everyone who's even outside of the Halo community I've seen like on Twitter talking about this game, saying that, wow, Halo Infinite's multiplayer feels fantastic and honestly I would kind of have to agree with them on that one but there are certainly some issues that the community did find and brought up that I wanted to showcase to you guys as well just interesting points and different uh, bits of takes that I think are very important for everyone to keep in the know of a major talking point here was this clip posted up by Snipedown that has almost 300,000 views saying okay at Halo I'm gonna need an explanation for this one as you can see with this video that this player who's playing on mouse and keyboard right here you can see the reticle being kind of pulled around like there's aim assist with mouse and keyboard and people were like okay this is really concerning why is there aim assist when it comes to playing on mouse and keyboard well sandbox lead quinn del hoyo actually had to respond to this and pretty much put all the issues to rest saying in this example as soon as a player touches their mouse aim assist is instantly disabled once mouse movement stops it takes half a second to enable again this does not come into effect during gameplay. Another issue that was brought up by the community right here was showcasing that it seems like with PC, there is no red reticle, but it seems like it might actually be functional in the background, but it seems to be some kind of way to avoid this anti-cheat. This video here by Nade God showcases how he, see, he says he's not getting any form of aim assist while playing Halo Infinite, while playing on PC, but with a controller, but because that certainly should be the case and his reticle never does turn red, which something I actually never noticed when I was playing myself and community manager Unishek actually chimed in with this little bit of information as well. Saying that this is intentional on PC as it's easy to write a cheat that says fire when pixel turns red for like turning on red reticle range. I know we've been trained to read red reticle equaling aim assist, but you'll still receive the same amount of aim assist even though the color of your reticle stays the same. And this video from Nade God had almost 45,000 views on Twitter alone with a ton of different retweets. So maybe sharing maybe wrong information or incomplete information. So this is why it's one of the things that's always really important to make sure that when you get your information that you have it correct and not just start sharing things around going like, oh my God, these things are broken. Why did 343 break Halo essentially? Which I certainly saw that reaction from these videos. So I think the most important thing is when you see information or something like that that you don't really know what's going on, especially like these clips are kind of out of context, that you don't just jump to conclusions right away. Now I'm sure many of you experienced this during the flight as well, and this is the BXB glitch, which is essentially just, you know, same thing from like Halo 2, but absolutely freaking insane. 
And you know, a lot of people were taking advantages. I'm not gonna lie, I certainly did as well because it's kind of fun. It's completely cheese and totally not supposed to be there, but it's still kind of fun just seeing how broken the animations are. And we actually had a confirmation from community director Sketch that sounds like this might not get patched before the end of these previews that we're having. Sketch saying that there's already a fix internally, but unlikely to be patched for the preview. So I'm assuming that, well, we had this whole weekend with the glitch on, I'm assuming I mean, we'll probably have the next weekend with the whole thing going as well. But I'll be honest, guys, I really didn't come across this glitch very often. I mean, yeah, I definitely had a few people do it to me, but I feel like I was doing it more often to people than I was experiencing it. So obviously it's something that should not be there at launch and it's not going to be there at launch. Maybe if we have a third flight, hopefully fingers crossed, that uh hopefully they get fixed for that but yeah it's definitely on the radar for three for three and it's going to get fixed for sure now, i'm sure many of you saw this image while loading into halo if any part thought okay this is some cool art some kind of thing that like you know not really game related or something like that it's just something cool to look at that's not exactly the case this actually is a bit of the world of zeta halo that's going to be part of the campaign for Halo Infinite. Former developer Caleb said, saw this beauty on the Halo Infinite stream today. The area on the left is the first level I designed during my time at Halo. It is awesome to see how it's looking. The team did a great job. And another former dev chimed in on Twitter, retweeting the saying, and I cleaned up the gameplay for this area as well. So this section over here on the left is an actual section of the campaign gameplay of Halo Infinite, which if we have this kind of like looking environments within the world of Zeta Halo, dude, count me in. This looks absolutely incredible. I can't wait to play the campaign, dude. Just get into my hands by now. Come on. Now, do you guys remember like Halo events, like meeting up with people in person, playing Halo, watching Halo? Well, it sounds like that might be happening again towards the end of this year from this recent information from Tashi. Giving us a bit of information when it comes to the upcoming blog for HCS and talking about the first Halo event coming to us for 2021 saying, Next week, which is now this week, we are revealing details for the first Halo Infinite HCS event. This will replace the regular monthly ecosystem blog. We will give dates, venue, format, when to buy your spectator tickets and the team passes, and of course, COVID protocol for the health and safety of everyone. And you guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel because I'm crazy excited about this event, guys. I cannot wait to get a chance to meet up with all the Halo friends out there again and just be part of the Halo community once again in person. If it's safe, of course, and they do mention COVID protocols, so I'm assuming they might have something in there that help ease people's concerns when it comes to the health risks of an event in person, most likely indoors as well. Some more news, but this is gameplay related when it comes to Halo Infinite, and Tashi talked about here is saying that ranked and competitive settings will be revealed soon as well. He says that he thinks that they're super strong out of the gate, competitive insights team, multiplayer team, and sandbox team putting in lots of work. Because keep in mind guys that the stuff that we saw for the flight that we played was all social settings for Halo Infinite. These were not ranked settings, which will certainly be very different. At least we do know for a fact that grenade hit markers will be removed out of ranked for Halo Infinite. And when it comes to having autos or different radars or radar at all or different kind of settings i guarantee i'll let you guys know on this channel as soon as we get that information this week we also had the reveal of the greatest halo player to ever play the game which is part of the top 25 list that's been going on for the last two weeks each top player had their own kind of video preview or just kind of showcase showcasing the player and the person who ended up being number one was pretty much everyone's expected player and that was Ogre 2. This guy is an absolute legend when it comes to playing Halo, and I'm hands down the greatest Halo player to ever play the game. Like, everyone agrees because his level of domination within playing Halo, especially during the heydays of you know Halo 1, 2, and 3, and also within Reach, that guys like this guy was absolutely dominant no one can touch him like he's the most winning player of all time playing halo and it'd be crazy exciting to see what other pros come around for halo infinite this time around with this brand new generation and this week rounded off with royal 2 being number five pistola number four snake bite number three lethal is number two and an ogre to as number one. Now there certainly has been a good amount of controversy when it comes to this top 25 list because everyone has their own opinions about who is the best player, what constitutes being the best player ever in Halo. And 
you know, I think most, I think a lot of people kind of took it a little too seriously as it's really just kind of for fun and just to kind of get the discussion, get people excited about Halo Infinite. And while this top 25 list certainly actually did its job of getting people talking about HCS and competitive Halo because their engagements went through the roof when it comes to the HCS Twitter, so for better or for worse, it did its job properly. And while everyone was so busy playing Halo Infinite this weekend, we actually did get some MCC news as well. And the biggest thing they took away is a three page long development update about things going on with MCC. And this entire blog update right here was all about mod support for MCC, most particular Halo 2 and Halo 3 mod support, which if you guys do not know, people are crazy excited for this mod support to come into the game, and they're gonna be doing a lot of really crazy awesome things. I've seen a lot of prominent modders within the community talking about how they were excited about this update, and they are going to go ham once mod support finally comes into the MCC for Halo 2 and Halo 3. I guarantee if anything cool happens, I'll let you guys know on this channel, because mod support is gonna be the thing that kind of keeps MCC alive, what keeps people coming back to it. It's basically gonna be the main reason why I'm not going to install, uninstall MCC once Halo Infinite releases, because there's gonna be somebody out there who's gonna release some kind of cool, interesting thing. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have seen like Cursed Halo on YouTube, right? Well, that's a mod for Halo Combat Evolved, which the PC version of that game released in 2003, if I'm not mistaken, and people have been loving that. People have been creating so much content for that. We currently don't have a release date yet for season eight of the MDC. They, they did say it's gonna be within the fall. My guess would be sometime in early October is when we will see the release of season eight, bringing all that crazy armor customization as well. Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3 coming to the custom game browser as well. Mod support also for Halo 2 and Halo 3 and just a whole ton of more stuff, guys. I have a whole video talking about it on my channel if you guys wanna get all the kind of details of everything that's gonna be going in with season but as we get closer and closer to the release of that season, guys, I'll let you guys know on this channel. And not only was it a big weekend for just Halo Infinite news and stuff like that, but it actually was kind of an interesting thing that all this Halo Infinite stuff was happening during the 14th anniversary of the release of Halo 3. And I still vividly remember playing this game the night of release, standing out in front of the Walmart in my college town when I was going to college at the time, standing out in the cold just to make sure I get a chance to play this game as soon as possible. And guys, it was like a holy moment that I had when playing this game. I remember my friend took a picture of me when I first put in Halo 3's disc into my 360. I was grinning ear to ear, like so nerdy that just like, he had to take a picture of me because like I could, he couldn't understand how somebody could be so excited for a video game, but me being able to play Halo 3 and finally being able to finish the fight, yeah, I was a little bit excited. And I'm kind of getting those same feels again with the release of Halo Infinite coming around here. And I just really hope that game hits the mark and sparks a whole nother generation of Halo fans as much as Halo 2 and Halo 3 and even CE did as well. Now I found this on Twitter, which was very interesting. And this was a musical rap about Halo Infinite. And I just wanted to share this with you guys because he actually does a pretty damn good job with this song. Because oftentimes like rap songs involving video games or Halo being kind of like a badass kind of thing, tend to be kind of cringy, but this was actually like really cool. Also want to say mad respect to the guy the rocking the final boss hoodie as well while doing this video. Like this guy's a Halo fan for sure. And to round off the video for this week, guys, I want to showcase some really cool clips that people posted on social media of what they did within the flight. And there's some really cool things that people did with this, like some really cool uses of the sandbox that I really want to showcase. First, we're starting off with pro player Frosty, who I actually mashed against online. And like, yeah, he kind of kicked my butt pretty bad. This is the highest multi-kill I was able to find online where he gets a really sweet killtacular playing some PvP. And like, guys, of course, it would be Frosty who would be the guy to get like just insane clips like a kill tag in a 4v4 is kind of crazy. Fellow content creator Ice Spyfall pulls off this repulsor ninja move on this guy and like that's just some of the cool things you can pull off with the sandbox in Halo and this is just like such an awesome little clip I just had to show it to you guys like I who wouldn't want to see this. This clip's from Meta Boy himself Shyway showcasing the type of movement that you can pull off with the grapple shot and just general Halo Infinite movement that you can do and like look how much you can just zoom around like this is what I love about Halo Infinite's movement in this game is that it utilizes the sandbox and map knowledge so much more than I feel like in Halo 5 where in Halo 5 you kind of created the movement where in Halo Infinite you have to utilize your knowledge of the map and physics to really take advantage of the different types of tools that you have to offer where you can 
pull off these kind of insane moves, which of course it would be Shyway who would be someone to figure something like this out. This clip was absolutely hilarious. I just need to have you guys watch it. Look at all these bots right here, just bomb with the map. They all charge after him. He repulses them all for an overkill pancake. Like, excuse me? And then watch this at the very end. Watch, just watch, wait for it, wait for it. And this teammate bot just falls off the map. What? <laughs> Oh my god, dude. like, I definitely pulled this move off on a couple players on Live Fire and also on Recharge as well with the Repulsor, dude. Like, the stuff you can pull off with the Sandbox in this game is just so cool. And, like, guys, like, Halo Infinite is just shaping itself up to be just something really awesome. Our final clip here just showcases, like, the most insane flag run I've ever seen, especially in Halo Infinite, much less just Halo in general, utilizing the grapple shot, the different jump maneuvers you can pull off, and, like, look at this... Like, just utilizing the physics, you can just yeet the flag across the map, zoom across the whole thing. Like, this is definitely the most effective, like, or at least the fastest flag run I've ever seen on Bazaar. And, uh, well, again, like, we're just scratching the surface right now when it comes to how to utilize the sandbox within Halo Infinite. And, guys, it's just crazy exciting to see all this different kinds of stuff that people can pull off, like, these slide maneuvers, utilizing the grapple shot, taking advantage of what you can utilize for all these tools, to really optimize your gameplay. Like I thought there was a lot of uh, that kind of stuff with Halo 5, but I think it's just even more with Halo Infinite. And like I said, we're just getting started, guys. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the videos right here. I got a place to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, I'll catch you all again Monday morning with another episode of Last Week in Halo. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.